In this third section, we will look at the elements of a good plan and discuss how best to document that plan. As the assembled dwarves and Gandalf met in Bilbo's Hobbit Hall in Bag End, he knew that despite their best laid plans, things might still go awry. You couldn't just wander off into the woods and mountains with goblins and wolves and dwarves on the prowl. Digitization projects are essentially the same, although of course the risk of dragons is greatly reduced. So let's look in more detail at documenting planning as it pertains to mobilizing biodiversity data. A plan is a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. The important words for us in this are detail, proposal and achievement. In order for your team to perform effectively, they need to know what they are doing and when they need to do it. So you need to be able to articulate the details of your plan to them. We, dis we discussed previously the importance of documentation and also looked at the elements required to create a workflow. Here we will see how to translate those into a well-constructed practical planning document. So, the documentation of your plan describes the why and the where of your project. All of the elements that we have discussed in the previous sections come together in the project planning document. The main purpose of which is to provide all stakeholders with an exact account of expectations and responsibilities. It gives everyone a guide to know the pro how the project will actually be done. It provides you with accountability. Everyone should know what they are responsible for and also what others are responsible for. It helps to ensure integrity. Do what you say you will do, especially where sensitive data is concerned. It provides you with protection. A good plan helps you to avoid scope creep and unexpected requests. A good plan provides proof of compliance and allows you to show that you have followed the standards that you said you would. It enhances availability. Your plan should always be available and there shouldn't be anything hidden by this stage. It documents retention i.e. how long the data, will be, the data created by this project will remain fresh and what needs to happen to keep it that way. Your project plan will document disposition. What is the ownership of the data created by the project and who will be responsible for it at the end of the project and afterwards? Good documentation encourages transparency. Openly sharing practical project plans feeds back into the community and allows others to share in your successes and learn from your failures. It also provides and promotes teamwork. All stakeholders benefit from knowing how they fit into a bigger picture and the more of a sense of ownership that they have, the more likely your project is to succeed. So let's break this down into its elements. The first thing we will discuss is what we will call the proposal. Think of it as a, as a statement of work. In the context of a practical planning document, the proposal contains a streamlined statement of the rationale for the project, an analysis of potential risks, and the metrics by which the performance and deliverables will be measured. In a little more detail, rationale describes the reasoning and logic behind the decision to digitize and ultimately publish data. Using your assessment of available resources that we discussed in the previous section, you should be able to document potential risks and the steps that you will take to mitigate them. Lastly, metrics. These are the methods that you, are, you have chosen to assess both the quality of the outputs and chart progress made towards your goals. The second thing to consider is detail. The planning document is the place to include as much information about the practical day-to-day -day workings of your project as possible. The activities of each stakeholder should be covered in this document. Gantt charts, flow diagrams and timelines are all good visual tools for helping you present these activities. The third element to take into account are achievements. You should break down high-level goals into direct deliverables that will move you towards those goals. For example, if your goal is capacity enhancement and extension, then you will have specific ach achievements that may include the installation of an institutional IPT, training of all collection staff in appropriate imaging standards, or the development of a new website. 
Your other goals will themselves be direct deliverables and may include things such as Darwin Core metadata for every digitised specimen, high resolution specimen uh, images of archive quality, a data set published to GBIF by, via IPT, and project reports. To review, in this section, Elements of a Good Plan, we looked at what kinds of things should be included in a good practical project planning document. The proposal should give the reader insight into the rationale, risks involved and metrics used during the execution of the project. The detail. The plan should be as detailed as possible and include day-to-day -day working guidelines for each and every stakeholder and all of their assigned tasks. Achievements. All direct deliverables should be documented with timelines and high-level goals broken down into, direct, into their actual deliverables. <laughs>